welcome to a fresh new edition of your favorite program science monitor a program that keeps you updated on all that is happening in the world of science and technology first let us take a look at the headlines iit delhi hosts the 10th edition of open house more than 500 student innovation projects showcased in the exhibition Indian Railways organizes two-day technological conference on emerging fire protection technologies. Indian Medical Association appeals to the doctors, do not over-prescribe antibiotics. Threat to Indian rivers deltas. New study says deltas are sinking due to increasing human activity. NASA prepares to grow vegetables in space, takes the first step under experiment veggie and in our segment in focus we shall discuss about the importance of earth day and our environment and now news in detail iit delhi held its 10th edition of open house in its premises on 19th of april the annual event of the Premier Institute of the country showcases innovative research projects undertaken by IIT students and faculty. More than 500 innovations were showcased in the exhibition that drew a lot of interest and praises from school students and all those having keen interest in the subject of science. Here is a report. IIT Delhi successfully conducted the 10th edition of its annual event Open House on its premises on 19th April. Open House 2014 was a one-day event that showcased about 140 live demonstrations and innovative research projects and commercial designs undertaken by IIT students and faculty. The event was dedicated to provide an insight into path-breaking research work, student projects and the numerous advanced facilities and laboratories available in IIT Delhi. So this is basically a kitchen water treatment plant. Uh, we took sample from our mess. The water sample contains impurities like detergents uh, uh, and grease, oil, food particles, etc. Uh, as you can see the turbidity in the water, filtration takes place through uh, different layers of gravels. Uh, first we use coarse gravels, then finer gravels and then sand uh, using which filtration takes place. And that takes around 5 minutes and costs you around only 15 rupees. And uh, this is the novelty of this uh, entire setup that uh, this helps in achieving this much level of purity from this much dirty water as you can see color turbidity and food uh, all the filthy material has been cleared off continuing the tradition of last nine years this year too open house presented some of the finest projects and proved to be a real treat to the visiting students technology enthusiasts school children industries and general public waterless urinal technology is a very simple technology in the urinal to eliminate use of water at the same time to eliminate odor in the urinal because we want an odorless urinal. We don't want a urine which has odor in it. Odor is caused by ammonia and we want to control the ammonia release into the urinal. So we, IIT Delhi has a very simple and very powerful innovation called Zero Door, Zero Odor, which allows urine to flow through the urinal but does not allow ammonia to come back into the urinal. It retrofits into existing urinals. This means that you don't need to change the urinal. In that urinal, you can use this technology that you have been using for today. You will have zero water consumption and it is much lower cost than other competing technologies. Educative sessions such as new trends in science and technology to help eradicate disease and experience with cloud computing and the development of Badal were also special attractions of the event. The Open House of IIT Delhi is a unique platform that aims to encourage young students to explore beyond the curricula, to quench their curiosities and to bring in education, research, innovation and competent designs into the realm of market. Indian Railways recently organized a two-day global technological conference in the national capital on 24th and 25th of April. In a first of its kind exercise, the railways reached out to experts to seek solutions to reduce fire cases in trains and make travel safer. Various firefighting technologies were discussed during the program. The conference was attended by various experts from India and abroad. 
It is well known that locomotives and associated machineries, particularly railways, require special fire protection, the absence of which has been the cause of many tragic accidents in the past years. It is clear that there is an urgent need to develop highly effective fire protection technologies for locomotives. In this context, a two-day international technical conference on emerging fire protection technologies for rolling stock was held at Vigyan Bhavan, New Delhi on 24th and 25th April 2014. The conference was organized by the Institute of Rolling Stock Engineers and Indian Railway Service of Mechanical Engineers Association with support from Indian Railways and RIDES. A first of its kind, the conference brought together experts to provide fire protection technologies and to find solutions to reduce the fire cases, thereby making rail travel further safer. The conference also saw the presence of railway operators, rolling stock manufacturers, universities, consultants, etc. from a number of countries outside India such as Germany, Australia, UK, Japan, France, Belgium, Austria, Poland and Italy. Antibiotics are medicines that help us in fighting ailments, but their indiscriminate use is in fact harmful for our body. That is why the Indian Medical Association is now aggressively targeting doctors to ensure that they do not over-prescribe antibiotics. Thus, the doctors must prescribe only that much dose of antibiotics that is actually required by that patient. More details in this report. A mild fever with a throat infection? Take an erythromycin or amoxicillin. A case of food poisoning? Pop in an azithromycin or ciprofloxacin. Such simple self-medication tips are familiar to majority of us and over the years have become a trend, much like grandma's household cures. But while we randomly ingest antibiotics in an attempt to self-diagnose and cure even minor ailments and save the day, do we realize the long-term and irreversible damages we are causing? With the increased access to medications over the year, self-medication and thoughtless use of drugs, especially antibiotics, to cure common ailments have become a trend. This has been observed despite governmental checks and prohibitions of over-the-counter sales of antibiotics. This in turn has not only resulted in serious side effects among individuals, but also has given rise to antibiotic resistance among microbes. In an attempt to draw the attention of doctors and public towards the hazards of overuse of antibiotics, the Indian Medical Association has launched a nationwide campaign which will include workshops, talks and a pledge on rational use of antibiotics being put up on the association's website that can be downloaded by doctors. The program aims to discourage the overprescription of antibiotics by doctors for common illnesses like ordinary fevers, self-limiting diarrhea, etc., along with discouraging self-medication among patients and creating awareness regarding the dangers of popping antibiotics indiscriminately. The program also with the center's move to ban over-the-counter sales of 92 drugs, including antibiotics, is likely to curb the overuse, misuse and indiscriminate use of medications by doctors, nurses and pharmacists as well as reduce self-medication by patients. Indian rivers are losing their deltas every year. A new study led by the University of Colorado indicates most of the India's low-lying river deltas like that of Granga, Brahmaputra, Godavari and Mahanadi are sinking from human activity, making them increasingly vulnerable to flooding from rivers and ocean storms and putting millions of people at risk. The study further says that if no corrective action is taken, it won't be long when we would completely lose our precious heritage. A shocking study now reveals that Indian deltas are sinking at a rapid rate and the sink is caused due to human constructions rather than commonly believed cause, the rise in sea level. This issue was brought to light and discussed by Dr. James Sivitsky, American Professor of Oceanography and Geology at the University of Colorado in his lecture, The Peril of Deltas on the Indian Subcontinent. According to Dr. Sivitsky, humans are sinking deltas four times faster than the sea level is rising. Studies reveal that construction of large dams starved deltas of sediments, excessive mining of groundwater causes increase in the density of soil, and artificial levees built to obstruct overflow of rivers ultimately affect river courses. 
These human actions are responsible for the subsiding of major Indian deltas including Ganga Brahmaputra, Krishna Godavari, Brahmani and Mahanadi. Professor Siviski has conducted on-ground and satellite imagery studies that prove that India's Krishna Delta has witnessed a 94% reduction in sediment deposition in last year. The Godavari, Brahmani and Mahanadi Deltas have seen a 40%, 50% and 74% reduction respectively in sediments delivered to them over the last three decades. Theoretically, Humans have built one large dam every day for 130 years and stored hundreds of gigatons of sediments in these global reservoirs, depriving the deltas of the sediments. A river delta is a landform that forms at the mouth of a river where the river flows into an ocean, sea, estuary, lake or reservoir. Deltas formed from deposition of sediment carried by a river as the low leaves its mouth over long periods, this deposition builds the characteristic geographic pattern of a river delta. According to records, there has been a large-scale increase in the construction of dams post-1950, which has been trapping the sediments in the artificial reservoirs and preventing their deposition in the delta. Under such circumstances, rise in sea level causes the sinking of the deltas. It is estimated that the Ganga Delta, the largest and most fertile delta in the world, is meanwhile sinking at 18 mm a year, even as the sea level rises by 3 mm a year along this coast. Such a phenomenon can prove to be disastrous to the future for the thousands of people who depend on the delta for their livelihood. American Space Agency NASA is on its way to grow vegetables in space. Well, yes, you heard it right. NASA has sent a mini farm into space. Space flight company SpaceX has sent a vegetable production system on board its Dragon capsule into the space. The system will grow vegetables in space by a special technique. Let us get you more details on the experiment nicknamed Veggie by NASA. In an interesting study to be undertaken by the US space agency NASA, a plant growth chamber has been sent to the International Space Station that will help the astronauts grow lettuce in space. The International Space Station is a habitable artificial satellite in low Earth orbit. NASA sent the vegetable production system called Veggie aboard SpaceX's Dragon Cargo mission to the International Space Station on 14th April. The plant growth chamber will facilitate growing lettuce inside model flight pillows that will help the plant withstand zero gravity. The plant chamber is also be fitted with red, blue and green light emitting diodes that will help sustain the vegetables. The plant growth chamber is an experiment towards testing the potentials of space horticulture to provide food supply to space stations and determining the food safety in space that may be threatened by space-borne microbes. It is hoped that if the experiments prove successful, the chamber will eventually be used to grow a wider variety of vegetables in order to provide a lasting supplement to the ISS food supply and even be used for recreational gardening. Time to take a very short break here. We will be back with more science news. So stay tuned. Welcome back after the break. You're watching Science Monitor. And now our next segment Science Express shall take you through an exciting journey that will show you some other scientific activities across the country and the world. This week, a flag off ceremony was organized for a group of 15 Indian students who were selected to participate at the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair in the US. The group was selected from across India based on their innovative projects related to science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Over 1600 participants from 70 nations will be competing in this fair. During the ceremony, the outgoing American Ambassador Nancy Powell said that the fields of science, technology, engineering and mathematics are priorities for both India and the US. 
The Zoological Society of London and Yale University has recently done a study on 100 evolutionary distinct and globally endangered species worldwide. And according to the report, 15 Indian bird species are part of a list of avians which are evolutionary distinct and globally endangered. The list includes the Bengal florican, lesser florican, great Indian bustard, sociable lapwing, Jedon's courser, spoon-billed sandpiper, Siberian crane and white-bellied heron and forest owlet etc. The main reason of their extinction are mostly because of human factors such as uncontrolled urbanization, unsustainable industrialization and rampant use of chemicals in agriculture. Other main reasons are destruction of their habitats like grasslands and wetlands. NASA's moon probe, Lunar Atmosphere and Dust Environment Explorer was crashed into the lunar surface last week, ending its six-month mission. At the time of impact, its speed was 5,800 km per hour, about three times the speed of a high-powered rifle bullet. The scientists informed that Lady lacked fuel to maintain a long-term lunar orbit or continue science operations and was intentionally sent into the lunar surface. Lady was launched in September 2013 from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia, started orbiting the Moon on October 6, 2013 and from November 10, 2013, it started gathering science data. Every year, worldwide, 22nd of April is celebrated as the Earth Day. The idea behind celebrating such a day is to create awareness and demonstrate support for environmental protection. It was first celebrated by the American Senator General in the year 1970. The event is now coordinated globally and celebrated in more than 175 countries each year. Here is a report on Earth Day. Earth, the only planet in the universe known to support life. The third planet from the Sun and the densest planet in the solar system. Earth, also known as the blue planet, is known to contain the right combination of elemental and climatic conditions that has led to the evolution of life on it. Radio dating has proved that Earth was formed around 4.5 billion years ago. It is believed that life first emerged on Earth at least 3.8 billion years ago, approximately 750 million years after it was formed. The atmospheric changes that gave rise to a non-toxic environment, presence of water and oxygen, ozone layer that protected the surface from harmful radiations and the perfect distance from the sun which neither rendered the planet too hot nor too cold proved ideal for Earth to be the cradle of life. Earth is divided into atmosphere that mainly consists of gases like nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, etc. The hydrosphere that includes all the water surfaces. Lithosphere that consists of the land mass and the biosphere that comprises of all ecosystems. Though distinct from other planets of the solar system in all aspects, the human activities in the last decade have resulted in massive degradation of Earth's natural resources. Reckless development activities and industrialization have resulted in pollution of air, water and earth and stripped the earth of its forest covers. Depletion of ozone layer, increase in global temperature, erratic changes in climatic patterns and massive crunch of resources have emerged as the aftermaths of our indiscriminate exploitation of nature. It is evident that if life is to continue on earth, it is extremely important to maintain the natural assets of the earth. It is in this context that Earth Day is celebrated on 22nd April every year to raise the visibility of the issue concerning protection of Earth and its natural resources. Earth Day, the celebration of our home planet, was first founded in 1970 by United States Senator Gaylord Nelson and is today celebrated in more than 192 countries each year. Earth Day is organized by the Earth Day Network which aims to inform and energize populations so they will act to secure a healthy future for themselves and their children. While the theme of the World Earth Day 2013 was the face of climate change, this year's Earth Day was themed Green Cities and focused on inspiring the global citizens towards cleaner and greener cities. 
There were also widespread discussions on the establishment of green schools that create awareness about rainwater harvesting and solid waste management, popularizing of concept of cluster village development, reclamation of water bodies etc. in India during the celebration of Earth Day this year. And what has been this week's contribution to the history of science? Let's find out in our segment, History of Science. April 28, 1900. Jan Hendrik Oud, the Dutch astronomer known for his contributions in the field of astronomy, was born in South Holland. Oot was a pioneer in the field of radio astronomy and was the first person to discover evidence of dark matter to explain the density of matter near the sun that was nearly twice what could be explained by the presence of stars and gas alone. He is also credited with the discovery of the galactic halo, calculating the center and mass of the Milky Way, etc. In 1950, he suggested that comets came from a common region of the solar system now called the Oot Cloud. Carlos Linnaeus, known as father of modern taxonomy, was a Swedish botanist, physician and zoologist who laid the foundations for the modern biological naming scheme of binomial nomenclature. His book Species Planetarum was the first botanical work to list every species of plant known at that time. In this book, plants were classified into genera. It is the first work to consistently apply binomial names and has therefore become the starting point for the naming of plants. May 1, 1888. Nikola Tesla was awarded the first US patent for brushless alternating current induction motor based on a rotating magnetic field principle. Tesla was a Serbian-American inventor, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer and physicist. Considered one of the world's greatest discoveries, an induction or asynchronous motor is an electric motor which worked using AC current. Most of the motors used in today's machineries are AC induction motors. 1st May 1958 The discovery of Van Allen radiation belts that surround Earth was reported by James Van Allen at the University of Iowa. The Van Allen radiation belt, named after its discoverer, is one of the two layers of energetic charged particles called plasma that surrounds the Earth. The belt extends from an altitude of about 1000 to 60,000 kilometers above the surface. The belts contain energetic electrons that form the outer belt and a combination of protons and electrons that form the inner belt. These belts are known to be a threat to the sensitive components of satellites. So, how do you like our program, Science Monitor? Well, do send in your comments and suggestions through email. Our email address is news at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also send us your suggestions by post. Our postal address is Vigyan Prasar C24, Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi, 110016. That is all in today's edition of Science Monitor. But we shall meet next week with more dosage of science news and exciting information. Till then, goodbye and take care.